All righty. Hi, everybody. My name is Kayla McWilliams, and I'm a conservation educator here at Camp Curry. And today we are live on the archery range at Camp Curry, talking all about archery. So I know some of you all at home right now may have your own bow already, which is awesome. Use it, love it, and take care of it. Okay, that's the important part, right? So we need to make sure um, that you're doing a couple steps to take care of your archery equipment. So we're going to be talking about that today. And I also know some of you all at home right now don't have your own bow. So if you are in the market, you're looking for a bow that maybe you want to buy, we're going to talk about some different types of bows today and some different kind of activities that you can participate in with archery. Um, not only that, but um, for those of you all um, who do have a bow at home or get one pretty soon, we're going to be talking about some fun activities that you can be doing at home, uh, maybe some challenges uh, for yourself and also so just some friendly competitions with friends or family. So that's what we're talking about today. Now, the first bow that I'm going to talk all about is gonna be the Genesis bow. So this is gonna be a great bow for beginners. So let me grab it here. And as I show it, many of you all are probably like, hey, I've seen that bow before. Um, because if you shoot NASP, which is the National Archery in the Schools program, or if you shoot archery like in your gym at school, you probably shot this one before. And I know many of you all probably own this bow. But again, this is a great bow for beginners um, and of course younger kids, your age, things like that. So again, this is the Genesis bow. Um, a couple reasons why it is a great bow for beginners is because you all know down here we have the cam, up here we have the other wheel, and on this bow there's no draw length. There's not like a set draw length. So this would be great if you do have longer arms or you know maybe a T-Rex wants to shoot or something a little short arm that's fine too. So there's no set draw length on this bow. Makes it awesome. Now another great thing about this bow is the draw weight. Now when I say draw weight what I mean is of course not how much the bow weighs but how hard it is to pull back. The pressure it takes to pull back. So for this bow, if you do buy it new, it's going to be about a 20 pound draw weight. So for this bow, um, again, 20 pounds is the heaviest the draw weight will be. Um, safely, the lowest draw weight that you can get it down to is going to be about 10 or 11 pounds. Okay, so again, it's you go from 10 to 20 pound draw weight. So again, great for archers of all ages. Now, real quick. If you do have this bow or you do purchase it new, again, it's super easy to maintain, to take care of. Now for um, that draw weight that I spoke about, it's really easy to lower uh, the draw weight or to crank up the draw weight. I'm gonna show you how now. So when you buy this bow, or you all probably have this cool laying around. Okay, so this is an Allen wrench. This will come with this bow if you buy it new. So with this Allen wrench, um, you can use it for a lot of things with your bow, but um, a really important one is going to be to adjust the draw weight. So here, okay, we have our bow limbs. Now, really fancy on the limb, we have this bolt. It's called the limb bolt. So to adjust that draw weight, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the limb bolt. So this bow right now is set up uh, to 20 pounds. So I'm going to take it down. Um, by turning it counterclockwise. So I'm just gonna take it around. You all see I'll make one full rotation. So where I started, that's where I stopped. That's one full rotation. Now one full rotation equals about a pound and a half. And whatever I do up here on this one, I'm gonna also do to this lower bolt. So again, one full rotation, about a pound and a half down. All right, so that's how we lower it and then to raise it up. I'm going to go clockwise to the opposite direction, okay, and that's going to bring it back up a pound and a half. All right, so again, you all can see that was pretty simple. Now, that part makes the bow great, but also maintaining and take care, uh, taking care of this bow is pretty simple as well. So really big thing to do to take care of this bow is to wax the bowstring. Okay, so to wax your bowstring, you all can see here is our bowstring right here. Now this string, we can get a good shot of that. If that uh, bowstring, maybe if we have like a microscope, 
we could see it's made up of a bunch of little bitty tiny individual strings. Um, so we want to make sure those stick together. We also want to make sure they don't get frayed and kind of dried out. So um, that can really hurt your bow string if you're not waxing it regularly. And to wax it really easy, I'm going to grab my bow wax. Keep it on the ground over there. Um, so this bow wax kind of looks like a big tube of chapstick. Um, don't use chapstick though. You need some good bow wax. So this is only a couple of dollars. You can get it at any archery store. What you're going to do, of course, take the lid off. Um, you don't have to mess with like this part, like the servings, but you do want to go up and down, down a little bit, get some wax on there. And then what you're going to do, okay, is just heat it up between your fingers and work it into those strings. Okay, so pretty simple thing to do to make the life of your string last a lot longer. So there we go simple so that's going to be something you want to do pretty regularly now another thing before you shoot always check your equipment so what can happen to these bows especially over time is uh, the limbs uh, might start to crack so what you want to do is check the limbs if you see a crack obviously you know but sometimes they can be super small so a really easy thing to do is get like a cotton ball and rub it up and down the limb and wherever that cotton gets snagged that may be a crack in your limb and that's definitely something you need to address now a great tip for all archers is find the local archery shop in your area so that's going to be great um, because if something like a crack limb does happen or you know you're looking up different youtube videos and you're like i don't know what to do on this you can always um you know use that local archery shop so limbs, bowstring, make sure they stay in good condition. Now, another good thing about this bow is that uh, most parts of this can be replaced. So obviously the bowstring gets really damaged, your dog chews on it, whatever happens, you can uh, purchase a new one. You can also, you know, purchase new arrow rests, even, you know, just pretty much any part, um, even down to like, the seed clips and stuff up here gets really specific. Um, so that's going to make it great as well because you can pretty much fix it all. And there is going to be a lot of videos out there that can help you do that as well, uh, mainly on the Genesis website. Now, speaking of the Genesis website, uh, you can purchase those bows, these bows from there. Um, you can also buy them at most sporting goods stores that sell archery equipment. Um, again, local archery shops. Now, the price of this bow is usually going to be around $200. So, again, this is the Genesis bow, a great bow for beginners and can be found pretty much anywhere that sells archery equipment. So, before we get to the arrows, I do want to open it up. Do we have any questions? I know I talked a lot about this bow. Um, do we have any questions about the Genesis bow, real quick? Hey, Kaylin, someone's asking. Yes. What will happen if you only adjust the top of the bow and leave the bottom a different weight? Okay, so if you just adjust one of those limb bolts, um, it's really gonna mess up your shot and even could uh, mess up your bow because if one side is adjusted and the other's not, there's gonna be a lot more tension on one side of that string. And if you pull that back and it's really off, you're gonna be able to feel it and again, it's probably just gonna mess up your shot pretty bad. So make sure whatever you do to that top bolt, you also do the bottom one or vice versa. Thanks, Caroline, that was a good question. Uh, so Aiden wants to know how much would that string wax cost or around about? Um, so string wax, I would say just probably a couple dollars, um, around $5, I would say, depending on where you get it. Um, but yeah, any kind of archery equipment store, you're going to be able to find that string wax there. Cool. Um, let's see. Yep, we'll get some camp questions here in a little bit, guys. So some of you all asking camp questions, we'll do those. Um, so how much is a compound bow? They're wanting to know how much this stuff's going to cost them. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, I'm going to try and get to um, not so specific prices, um, but I'll kind of try and guesstimate 
um, but we will get to the compound bow in just a second. But for those of you all who do have a Genesis bow or you wanna buy one, what I wanna talk about real quick um, is gonna be the arrow that you're gonna be shooting and then we'll get uh, to these compound bows. Now, this one is also a compound bow, um, but we're gonna talk about those arrows real quick. So this is an Eastman arrow. Now, you guys, arrows can be made of different material. Uh, this one is made of aluminum, so it's pretty durable. Now, the great thing about this arrow is that, again, just like the bow, most parts of these can be replaced. Um, and then for about six arrows, um, I know from the Genesis website, it's gonna run you about $30 for six arrows. So definitely wanna take care of them. And again, pretty easy. If something like the point comes out, you can replace it. If the fletchings come off, of course, uh, you can replace those as well. You just need to get you some good glue. And if you can, maybe some type of um, arrow jig that, that helps you put them back on. And then the knock, of course, it comes out and can be popped back in. So again, most parts of these can be replaced. Now, the shaft, okay? On this part, sometimes it may get bent. Maybe you step on it. Maybe um, you're such a good shot that you accidentally hit an arrow and it puts a hole in it or kind of tears the material a little bit. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys, can you fix that shaft? If you can, how? Nope, they're saying no. Nope. Very good. So you all know, that's great. If you do um, accidentally uh, dent, break, whatever, something happens with the shaft, you can't break it, okay? You all duct tape is not gonna work in that situation. So um, if the shaft does become damaged, that's just not gonna work anymore. Um, you don't wanna use that arrow because your shot's definitely gonna be messed up if you were to try to shoot it. So before you shoot, always make sure you check your arrows. Um, and of course, check for any damage before you start shooting. So again, that's the Easton arrow, great ones to use for the Genesis bow. Um, and again, great arrow all around. Now for this point, um, I do wanna point out that the point um, is a field point or practice point, or we call it practice tip, whatever. Um, but these are gonna be the ones that you shoot at your target. All right, because what I wanna talk about in a second, you are already asking about um, compound hunting bows. So I'm gonna talk about some other uh, tips as well, or points. Now, I have a couple other arrows here. So can anybody in the comments tell me, what do you think these tips are used for, for points? Well, nobody yet, Kaylin. Oh, hunting. There Very good. So awesome. We're going to talk a little bit um, about bow hunting. So bow hunting, if I'm certain some of you all out there are already great bow hunters, um, but for anybody that does shoot archery and maybe you want a little bit more of a challenge, um, bow hunting would be a great thing to get into. So we're just going to mention a couple things about it. Now for uh, these points, of course, this would be for more big game, for example, deer. So this is called a broadhead. Now there's different types and styles and brands of broadheads. Uh, this would be a fixed blade, but one thing, and I think you guys already know this, one thing they have, uh, how, what am I saying? All I have in common um, is that they are very sharp. So be careful, they are very pokey, very sharp. Um, now on this one, uh, this one's gonna be for small game, for example, like rabbits. Um, this is going to be um, a blunt tip, so that's what you're going to be using for something like small game. Now, the bow that you are probably going to be shooting. Um, this again, if we can get a good shot of this, um, is a uh, hunting bow. This is a bear uh, bow, and of course this one would be a great example of a compound bow that you can use for hunting. Now, a couple things you all can see that are different then our Genesis bow, they have a lot more things going on, sights, stabilizers, um, whisker biscuit, it's my favorite um, piece of equipment. And of course, you all can see, just kind of looks a little bit more complicated, a lot more stuff going on here. Um, but of course, a great thing about this bow and a reason that you would want to use it for hunting is because its draw weight is gonna be a lot heavier. And remember, if you're bow hunting, um, you're going to be wanting to make a quick humane kill. So um, having a heavier draw weight is going to be something you need for bow hunting. 
Now, another thing about this bow is that it does um, have a specific draw length that it's set to. So if you do uh, purchase a bow like this, then of course you are gonna need um, to set that specific draw length as well. Now for this bow, usually these are gonna co cost you a bit more. Um, I would say they would probably start at around 200 and could go up in many, many hundreds, like however much you wanna spend on them. So um, again, doesn't have to be, you know, the fanciest one of the most expensive, um, but they can definitely cost a lot more. All right, so that's a great hunting bow. Now another one, we can get a good shot of that. Further down the table um, is a crossbow. Now, the reason I wanna mention this one, um, the crossbow for those of you all who wanna get into bow hunting, um, but you know, you don't wanna have to pull back that heavy draw weight. Sometimes that can get pretty tiring and sometimes you can't even do it. Um, crossbows are a great option, okay? Because your draw weight for hunting, you know, sometimes can be around 40, even up to 70 pound draw weight. Remember the Genesis bow, its max is 20. So the draw weight can get pretty heavy, um, but for this um, crossbow, of course, um, it's not something you have to pull back, okay? For a crossbow, you just take the cocking mechanism, you put it around the string, and you pull it back, okay? So it's a lot easier um, to use a crossbow, of course, still has the sight and stuff on it, um, but this would also be another great option for hunting, and the price range for these, again, be about the same as the compound bow. I would say anywhere from $200 to many hundreds of dollars. So another great one for hunting. Now, for those of you all who may have looked at those bows, um, like sometimes myself, I'm like, that stuff can get a bit complicated um, and really pricey. So if you wanna make it more simple, um, traditional styles of archery, of course, still exist. People still shoot things like long bows and recurve bows. So, so those are another great option, either for target practice or of course for hunting as well. So here I have a longbow, all right, sitting here. And then also um, a recurve bow. Now, you all can see that, again, a lot more simple, right? Pretty much just a piece of wood and string. Um, but these bows can also be set to pretty um, high draw weights and can also be used for hunting as well. And then of course, you got the recurve bow right there. So again, if you want a little bit more simple, maybe shoot more traditionally, this is a great option as well. All right, so that's a little bit about bow hunting. Um, another bow I wanna show you all real quick, because this is my favorite one, is going to be the bow fishing bow. So let's hold down here. All right, all right, you all. So, um, bow fishing bows again, pretty much any bow that you have, you can attach um, a bow fishing rig or bow fishing reel. Okay, now you all can see the bow that this is on um, is a left handed Genesis bow, so you can even use your Genesis bow. Now, the reel that's on here is the AMS bow fishing reel, and if you really do want to get into bow fishing, the reels they can start out like a more simple style can start from $20 and one like this will be usually around $100. So again, this is the AMS reel. Now, if you've never heard of bow fishing and you're like, what is she talking about? Uh, bow fishing is literally where you shoot fish with a bow and it is awesome. So the way that it works, I'll show you this arrow real quick. The way that it works and this point was removed, but it would be very, very sharp right here is that this point has barbs on it. So when you shoot a fish, okay, it's gonna go through or go pretty deep into that fish and the barbs are gonna catch on so that way you can reel it in. So what you would do is just shoot this arrow, okay, shoot it normally, all right? It's gonna go out hopefully hitting a fish and then with your reel, you would, sorry, this is a lefty. So you would um, grab the trigger right there, which is this, long thing that's hanging there and you're going to reel in that arrow okay so that's the way that bow fishing works now a question for you all if 
you want to go bow fishing, um, remember there are laws, same way with bow hunting. So before you go bow fishing or go bow hunting, make sure you know the laws in the area, you know, the state, the lake, wherever. Make sure you know the laws in that area. So for bow fishing, okay, here in Kentucky, um, can I tell me what kind of fish can you shoot legally when bow fishing? The type of fish, or you can give me some examples. Oh, somebody thinks bass. Oh, good guess, but unfortunately, bass, please do not shoot bass, okay? Um, that is very, very illegal. Um, so bass are actually a sport fish. That's one that you cannot shoot. Um, so bass are off limits, um, but you can actually shoot fish that are called rough fish. So for anybody that said gar or carp, um, great. Those are both examples of rough fish um, and do not have a limit. So you can shoot as many as you want in a day. And again, bow fishing is awesome. Uh, but again, just wanna make sure you guys know the laws. Now, um, some fish, just an, as an example, do have a daily limit. So like a paddlefish, you can only shoot two of those fish in a day. Okay, and again, if you wanna know more about the laws of bow fishing, you can pick up or look up online um, our Kentucky Fishing and Boating Guide. So it's free online, or you can pick up a free copy at any store that sells hunting or fishing licenses. All right, so again, another law for bow fishing is that once you are 16 or older, you will have to buy your fishing license to be able to legally bow fish. Now, for most of you all watching, um, I think you are under 16. So right now, you can bow fish for free. So you do not have to have your fishing license right now, which lucky you all get out there and go bow fishing. So that's just a little bit about bow fishing. Um, now, one thing I do want to uh, mention about bows is uh, also make sure you're treating them properly. So if you were to shoot your bow without an arrow, right? If you were to draw back and release without an arrow, somebody tell me what is that called? Dry firing, very good. So thank you for answering that, but dry firing is not very good. Dry firing is very bad because not only can dry firing damage your bow, um, but also dry firing can also hurt you as a shooter. Um, so many things can happen. Your string can pop off, um, you know, the limbs can crack. You don't want that to happen. So take good care of your bow um, and never dry fire, right? Only shoot when you have a string knot. Now, last thing I wanna talk about, um, we're gonna head down range and we're gonna just show you a couple fun games that you could be playing at home with your bow. Um, just again, a couple challenges for yourself or maybe a little bit of friendly competition with friends or family. So as we head down range, um, send in some of your questions and we can get them answered. Hey, Kaylin, somebody's yes. asking if the length of your arrow would make a difference in your shot. We didn't hear you. Someone right, is more asking um, if the length of your arrow would make a difference in your shot. Um, of course. So the length of your arrow. Um, for this Genesis bow, uh, the eastern arrow that I showed you all earlier, that's going to be a 30 inch arrow. So that's going to be, you know, good on this bow. Um, now, if you do get into, of course, um, you know, other compound bows, of course, bow hunting, that kind of stuff, uh, there's a lot more things involved. So the arrow that you're going to be shooting on like your compound bow for hunting, um, the length of it is going to um, be affected by your draw length. Okay, of course, if you've got shorter arms, you're going to have shorter arrow. Um, other things that affect it could be uh, the type of broadhead you shoot. Uh, the bow that you're shooting, a lot of things. So um, if you were going to be bow hunting, um, whenever you purchase those arrows, especially like if they're just in, you know, regular box of arrows, they aren't going to be cut. So they're going to be really long. They're not going to have a point on them. So if you ever buy a box of those arrows to go bow hunting, you are going to have to get them cut, which again, going to the local, you know, your local archery shop, 
they're going to be able to do that for you and also point you in the right direction when it comes to how long your arrows need to be. Because yes, that can affect your shot. And also you want to make sure you're shooting the right length of arrow for you and also for your bow. Hey, Kaylin, uh, another question is, um, so can you change the tips on any arrow? Great question. So, um, no, it really depends on the arrow that you purchase. Like for the Eastern arrow, we wouldn't be able to put really any other tip on there. Um, it really just depends on, on the points that you have, whether it's a broadhead or, or like a blunt point or whatever. It really depends. Some can be screw in. Um, the ones that we're going to be shooting right now, the Easton arrows, the aluminum ones, um, those just kind of like pop in, like fit in there. So it really depends on the arrow and also the point that you're going to be using. So you want to make sure your point works for your arrow. And Aiden and maybe a couple others are asking, how far can you shoot a bow? Great question. So it really depends on the bow that you're shooting. Also, um, it's going to depend on like you as an archer um, and of course the draw weight of your bow. So um, for these, it would be, you know, a lot less because again, this only goes up to a 20 pound draw weight. So accurately, uh, you know, it'd be a lot harder to get an arrow out far with this bow. Now for the compound bows that have like the hunting bow we showed you, um, also the crossbow we showed you, now that one is going to be able to shoot a lot farther more accurately. Now um, if you do decide to get out there and go bow hunting, um, it's really important that you also um, are able to estimate um, range. Okay, so you want to make sure when you're taking a shot that you are going to be able um, to quickly and humanely kill that animal. So you don't want to make too far of a shot, right? So it is all about, you know, getting out there and practice and stuff. But on most bows, okay, here's the number. On most bows, um, it's going to be around 30, maybe can even get up to 50 yards um, that you can accurately shoot. But again, bows, they're not going to be able to um, travel that range that like the firearm could. But again, you know, you do shoot a more powerful crossbow um, and you practice a lot your range is going to be farther um, than somebody that's, you know, just trying to shoot this one and they don't shoot very much. So again, practice, the draw weight of your bow, that kind of stuff really affects it. But um, again, 30 to 50 yards, 40, less than 40 is, is usually a good place to stay. Oh, here's a big one. Every time I shoot, the string hits my wrist. How do I stop that? All right. Um, so if the string is hitting your arm, which honestly, I know I've seen some really bad ones that really look like they hurt. Um, so I want you guys, if you ever have that problem, um, wherever you are right now, get to like a wall or something. So I'm going to show you all something that's pretty important. So I'm going to use this tree. Um, whenever you are holding your bow. Okay. If you stretch that arm really far out there, I'm going to do it on the tree now. You all can see this bump right on the other, like kind of the underside of my elbow sticks out and that's what's going to get hit. So what you want to do is practice from going from this position where your arm is straight out and kind of twist that. Now I know that can look kind of weird, but if you all have practice it, you know, everybody's arm does that. Okay. I'm not like double jointed or anything. You're just rotating your arm. So if you are one of those that hits your arm, um, you can practice that. Just remember that when you're shooting, whenever you're ready to shoot, say, oh, let me, let me watch my arm real quick. Um, or, you know, if you want to, just being aware of it is, is a great thing, but also they do have arm guards and stuff that you can purchase. But if you don't want to spend the money, just work on rotating that elbow out or even put a little bit of bend in that elbow. So a couple options there. Alex, I want to know if we will be shooting one of the broadheads. Um, so no, I'm not going to be shooting one of the broadheads today because um, targets, and if you guys buy archery targets, they're pretty expensive and broadheads tear up your target real quick. So for those of you all at home, if you have broadheads, um, you know, 
you do want to practice with them and stuff before you hunt or get a practice uh, point that's similar in weight to your broadhead, but you do not want to regularly shoot uh, your broadheads into your nice archery targets because they're going to get tore up really, really quick. So we're not going to be shooting any broadheads today because I want to keep our targets in good condition. All right, so should we head down to the range um, where I'm going to show you guys some things that you all can be doing at home. All right, so on our first target here, I'm sure many of you all at home right now just have some, you know, spare balloons laying around from, you know, somebody's last birthday who didn't get blown up or whatever. So you can put those on your target. Um, that would be, you know, pretty good challenge for yourself. Now, if you want kind of a level up from that, uh, maybe take a spare empty toilet paper roll and put it on your target. So we're gonna try to shoot directly in that without damaging the toilet paper roll. Or if you have some friends or family at home that also like to shoot, play tic-tac-toe, but just an extreme version of tic-tac-toe. So we're gonna play tic-tac-toe with um, our uh, bow and arrow. So of course, works like normal tic-tac-toe, but now it's just set up on our archery target. So for those of you all who do have an archery target at home, um, great, use it. Uh, but if you don't and you're like, well, I don't want to go buy one, there's a couple ways you can make one. You know, take a lot of cardboard and kind of tape it together, make it pretty thick so your arrow doesn't go through. Um, take a, you have like straw or a hay bale, that would make a good target as well because that's going to catch your arrow and not let it go through. Also make sure what whatever is behind your target is safe too. Um, you know, make sure your mom's car is not back there, or your little brother's hiding behind it or whatever. So always check, you all can see behind ours right now, we have um, a archery net hung up. So that's gonna catch any straight arrows that we have. All right, so now I'm gonna head down this way. And I have Clay here shooting with me today. So I think we'll play some tic-tac-toe. And Clay is going to be shooting uh, left-handed. We're going to start on the tic tac toe Yes. Oh. Tic -tac -toe. So Clay, you go first. Clay is going to be uh, shooting a left-handed bow, which means he is left eye dominant. Um, I shoot right-handed because I'm right eye dominant. Um, so another good thing about these bows is that uh, they do sell lefties and righties. So. Hey, Kaylin, a couple of them were asking for pointers on shooting. So you guys do yeah. that. Great. Okay. You see me good? Mm -hmm. Or is it too bright? You get over here. Okay. All right, guys. So for those of you all who want some pointers, um, the biggest thing I would say, again, these bows do not have any sights or anything. Um, I use the arrow to establish my aiming point. So the tip of my arrow is going to go to where I aim. Now, the biggest thing is to be consistent, okay? Do the same thing every single time. Anchor in the same place every single time, et cetera. Um, so again, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure you're doing that first. Don't so much worry about where you're shooting, like getting a bullseye every time isn't that important. You want to make sure um, you're shooting consistently. So, you know, as long as you have a good group, um, you're going to be able to move that aiming point and get your arrow to go where you want it to go. So even if I know a great tool that a lot of archery coaches use is they just put a white face over um, like a white piece of paper or whatever over their target. So that way um, they don't see the bullseye or anything. They just work on being consistent. So again, work on consistency. That's a huge thing with these bows. All right. So, I'm going to do, go ahead and knock an arrow. <laughs> All right, let's see who wins a tic-tac-toe. You already go? Left. Okay. That's the middle. And guys, if you're watching Kaylin and looking for those extra tips, you might see her doing the follow-through uh -huh. your arm as well. Very good. Also, thank you, Nancy. Um, a follow-through for those of y'all who are like, what are you talking about? Um, when you come to anchor and you release, you don't just want to let go, okay? When you do that, 
you know, that stops that motion right there. It's kind of like hitting a baseball. If every time you hit the baseball, you just stop once you hit it, um, it's not going to go as far as you want it to. And your shot isn't um, going to be as good as you want it to. So when you, where'd you go? I got top right and center on the left. You got the center. The very you don't have much of a, uh, of a plane. Okay, so if you all saw that, it's just one movement. Um, when I draw back, okay, I'm going to release, and it's just one follow-through movement. Okay, that's why it's called the follow-through. So you're going to kind of come back this way. We also call it hanging our face. you stop. <laughs> Does anybody ever win tic-tac-toe? I'll bet you the last Zoom. <laughs> It's a friendly competition. Someone is asking about, would you put a sight on that bow? Um, I guess it has places where you could. Um, if you're shooting NASP, I don't think you're allowed to, though. Yeah, of course, if you're shooting NASP or any kind of competition or anything, or, um, you know, for this bow, especially since you're going to be, again, only 20-pound draw weight, uh, max, so you're going to be pretty close. Um, you can if you want to, I think, but um, you know, again, you're still going to be pretty close to your target. And um, for NASP and different competitions and stuff, you can't do that anyway. So uh, for this one, I would say no. But of course, when you get up into like bow hunting and stuff, um, if you want to, there's a lot of different kind of sites. They can range from, again, what do you say? Kind of like a cheaper site, maybe like a hundred all the way up to like several hundreds of dollars. So um, it just kind of depends how much you want to spend. I know for the recurve and the longbow, there's no sights on them, um, but I guess you could if you really wanted to. And if you wanted to get started and just see how to We're think about going. it, you could always look at yard sales and stuff too. A lot of times you find. Oh yeah, great. That's a great point. So um, for those of you all um, who are in the market to buy your own bow. Don't think you just have to, you know, go buy a brand new one or something. Uh, definitely check around when we get to go to yard sales again, or um, maybe if you know somebody that, that shoots archery, maybe they're wanting to get rid of a bow, especially one that they don't use much anymore. Um, the first bow that I started shooting was a hand-me-down, um, and it was a hand-me-down recurve, so it wasn't pretty, but I got to shoot. So, um, yeah, definitely don't think you have to buy anything new um, used is also a great option as well. And somebody is asking me if we actually sell our game. If we sell the TikTok our, our equipment. Maybe you can show them that we just, with our Tic Tac Toe uh, guys, what we did is we just took tape. Uh, and that happens to be, I think we call painter's tape. So it's a blue colored and uh, put it on our target. And that's what we did. So it's not something you have to go out and buy. It's not something fancy. We just took some tape we had laying around here and used the tape to make a tic-tac-toe board on our target. Yep, balloons and a toilet paper roll. <laughs> Save your toilet paper rolls. Those are priceless. Paper. Yep. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, goodness. Let's stay with the hunting questions. Uh, so... Uh, can you hunt with a bow without a hunting license? Uh, great question. So I know I mentioned a little bit about uh, the fishing license, but when it comes to um, your uh, hunting license, um, again, you got to make sure you have the proper license and tags or, you know, for whatever you're hunting for. Uh, so here in Kentucky, if you're going to be 12 um, or older, okay, 12 or older, I know some of you guys are that age now, 12 or older and hunting on property, um, that's not owned um, by like your parent, uh, then you will have to purchase your youth hunting license. And if they're fishing though. Or, yeah, or your adult, whoever your adult is, um, then, you know, if you're not hunting on their property, um, then you will have to purchase your youth hunting license. For fishing, if you all remember, um, I mentioned it was 16 or older. So for hunting, you know, it starts a lot younger or fishing, um, it is 16 or older. Is a bow illegal, uh, legal to use for hunting? 
you kind of answered it, I think. Great, yeah, so of course bows are, are definitely legal to use for hunting. Um, compound bows, you know, recurve or long bows. We'll try again. I'm and trying to answer questions. Oh. Someone's asking, I'm missing guys, you, the questions come pretty quick. Uh, if like when you hunt deer, there's a certain spot in the deer you would want to shoot for. Uh, would that be true for fish as well? Is there a certain spot you want to aim for? Um, I would say probably not. Um, so of course you want to kind of aim for, for the bigger part of the fish, right? Kind of like the middle. Um, that's a great question. So I would kind of go for the bigger part. Um, but you know, there's not really wherever you can kind of get it. But again, wherever the bigger uh, part of the fish is kind of the middle right below the head is where you're going to have, you know, better accuracy. It's a lot more better of a chance that you're going to actually end up shooting that fish. So no, there's not a specific spot. Um, but as long as that arrow gets in there and sticks, you should be good to go. Good deal, guys. Any other archery questions I may have missed in the chat today? Or anything you're thinking of here at the last minute? All right. Hey, I know there's been a couple of people, and one in particular, asking about camp uh, for seventh graders. Uh, so while we're kind of watching questions about the hunting or the, uh, the archery stuff real quick. Uh, so what we are working on, there is, some, there is some thought, there is some effort being put in to maybe putting together a camp opportunity for seventh graders next year um, because this year since we weren't able to actually be in camp together I know some of you as sixth graders missed out maybe on your last year uh, so they are looking looking at doing something different next year just for seventh graders um, maybe uh, during a certain week in the summer at one of the camps so we're working on that idea thought is there I just don't know the details yet uh, I would recommend just kind of keeping an eye on our website on the camp in web page I'm sure once they kind of put all that together any information they have about it will go up on that website. So someone asking about seventh grade, it is a thought, man, we're working on it. We're looking at it. We're just trying to figure out all the details and hopefully we'll be able to pull off something for you. Um, I will tell you as these guys are shooting over here, doing their tic-tac-toe, that if you are um, doing our camping program, uh, one question a lot of people have asked in different, at different times is, okay, so as I complete the different challenges, what do I do with that stuff? Uh, so like the videos you're asked to make or uh, papers you uh, fill out. <laughs> So the way that works is there are educators like myself and Kaylin and Clay down there. Uh, we're assigned to different counties. So there's a list uh, on the camp site that you could click on. But for example, if you lived in Marshall County, which is right here where camp is at, um, and you wanted to see who your contact person was for Marshall County, then you would find my name listed beside it and give you my contact info. And I would be the one you send it to. Uh, if you live in other parts of the state, you click on that list, just look for the county that you're in and then that's your contact person to help you earn your virtual packages. So you're, as you guys are completing those, that's where those will be sent. They'll be sent to those people in your county. All right. So to get the camp questions and all our archery questions, I also mentioned that if you missed out last week, we uh, were literally hanging in the trees. We talked about tree stand safety and all the different tree stands you might be able to use. If you've ever heard people talk about them and didn't know what they were or how they got used. We did a tree stand Zoom last week with Brian. And since we had some people who missed that class because it did fill up, uh, we're gonna do an encore performance. So this Thursday, he's gonna be doing that again. So if you've missed out or wanna kind of catch it again, so you can see some more details or just catch what's going on. Um, I sent the email out uh, last week that had the link to, to register for that class. So that's coming up again on Thursday. Next week, I'll be sending an email tomorrow about next week's Zoom. And next week, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to learn to fly fish, which is a whole different way of catching fish, kind of a fun way, a challenging way. And you guys are going to meet DJ next week. So we've got that coming up next week. We also have another Zoom this week uh, with, our, with our tree stand safety, if you missed that. Um, so a couple of things coming up here pretty quick if you guys want to jump in on Zoom with us.